National polling update. Why don't we move on? That's sort of our look at Super Tuesday. But um, yeah, that's a line, isn't it? I, I'm not an expert, but um, <laughs> but you are, Podgul. So why don't you tell us what that really big uptick line means? I think this is what they call momentum. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's maybe the simplest way. And obviously, this this polling chart is way less cluttered than uh, our last few episodes. And by that, I mean there are a lot fewer candidates this time now that it's just a two-person race. But I think we're pretty, um, I, I think we both agree, and we could also bring Scott into the conversation here, that this is Biden's race to lose at this point. Um, everything seems to kind of be going in his, in, in his favor. Um, what do you take away from this chart, Scott? Yeah. I mean, it's one of the biggest polling reversals we've seen, I don't know, in a long time, if ever. Probably not if ever. I'm sure it's happened before, but just look at what the last week is. And I don't know if we have it in the forecasting update. Just if you track our public forecasting, just the the, the turn it took. I I like to say, you know, this is basically Biden would have to snatch uh, defeat from the jaws of victory on this one. Um, It'll be interesting to see, you know, I think Sanders is sticking in mostly because he's got a debate this Sunday and it's one-on-one and I don't know, it's the last Hail Mary, but it looks like Biden's going to take almost all, if not all the states tomorrow um, and is set up to do really well, probably take all the states on Tuesday barring a bad debate. So this thing's probably wrapped up barring a bad debate by next week. Can we and that polling moment, shows that. Can we take a moment to consider where we were 10 days ago? I mean, how fast this has changed. And I know people will say, well, then it could change again. And I guess, sure. Um, at some point, the changes kind of have to stop and the music ends and everybody has to grab a seat. So maybe this is where we are. But that's just astounding, isn't it? I mean, the last 10 days is unlike anything I've ever seen in, in political life. Um, can you guys think of anything that abrupt and that sharp? No. Two weeks ago, I was buying Biden losing in Super Tuesday shares on Predicted. Thank God I got out of those. But, like, I mean, you you were wondering if he was going to stick around after South Carolina two weeks ago. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous, which is why this is one of the harder things to predict. You know, probably not since maybe the 2016 um, Bernie upset in Michigan, but that was, like, a one-time event. This has been, like, a slow – this has been a 10-day – you know, shock and awe campaign for Biden. Yeah, and I think one of these sort of under, uh, sort of the understudied aspect of this so far is just the tight window between South Carolina and Super Tuesday, because that was when everything changed. That was the period when Mayor Pete dropped out, Amy Klobuchar dropped out. That's when sort of the consolidation of the so-called sort of anti-Bernie share uh, was all tying together. And yes, it happened pretty quickly. Um, But that was also just a function of the early primary calendar. And so there were 72 hours between Biden's huge victory at South Carolina, where he overperformed the polls, um, and and Super Tuesday. And so I think that when people are going to go back and look at this contest and say, well, what happened? I think that's that, that th- those three days, that's where everybody's going to be paying attention um, and just looking at how the South Carolina result uh, really influenced some of the other campaigns to drop out and consolidate. And I mean, we might not even, if Bloomberg had dropped out that weekend, which he would have had no incentive to do so because he hadn't appeared on a ballot yet. But if Bloomberg had dropped out, we might not even be having this uh, this conversation right now because it could have all, could have pretty much been wrapped up uh, on Super Tuesday, if that were the case. Yeah, and I think one of the underrated aspects of, of what happened here is going back to the debate and, and Bloomberg's decision to participate in the Nevada and South Carolina debates. It was He had spent, obviously, a, an enormous amount of money on, on paid media and was getting some earned media, but it was very, very controlled. And then he got out into the wild with you know professional sharks, right? That, that's what they do. I know he was the mayor of New York City and everything. But these are people also that have been doing it for eight months, you know, to walk into that first debate is sort of like, you know, being a, an injured baseball player and coming into a game in July against a pitcher who's, who's been doing it for months, you know, you're just going to be behind the curve a little bit. And I think his, the, the end of the flirtation that people may have had with him was, the, was something that benefited Biden tremendously because there was always that inverse relationship between 
Biden support and Bloomberg support. People were sort of going back and forth. And, you know, when, when he didn't deliver the goods by just about everyone's estimation, including his own campaign at the time, that really set the conditions, I think, for, for Biden to have a what was considered a good debate and then overperforming South Carolina and, you know, 10 days to change the world kind of stuff. Man, we got to fill 40 seconds on polling. I mean, it's pretty clear. Biden, I know. <laughs> Biden's, yeah. <laughs> I think we covered everything we need to know. Biden, 